What's up guys? Today we're going to discuss focus stacking. I've got two images, one taken for the foreground, these tree roots here, and one taken for the background. So if we look at the background image, the mountains are in focus, however the tree roots here are out of focus. So when you focus for the foreground, you have the opposite problem. So we now have our root system in focus, but now our mountains are out of focus. So we need to blend these two together. So what I recommend doing first is going through your adjustments and doing all the basic adjustments you need to do on one of the images. And then you're going to sync the settings. And that's done. Let me move myself here. That's done by selecting the two and then doing sync. And then you can select. I do select all and then synchronize. But I've already done that prior to this video. So what we're going to do is have both images selected. We're going to right click our, one of the images and then do edit in edit in Adobe Photoshop and then edit a copy with Lightroom adjustment so those are your basic adjustments you just did so click edit and this will bring you over to Photoshop and it'll open up the images when we get into Photoshop the images are opened in separate layers I would usually do uh, open as layers in Photoshop but I'm in the process of uninstalling 2019 and going back to 2018 due to the lag in the new Photoshop so what we can do is unlock the layers of one of the two and then command or control C then come over to the other layer and click off the layer here and command V or control V and that'll paste the layer into this window we can now close this window here and don't save so with both layers in here we want to select them both come up to edit auto align layers I always choose auto for the first one to see if it usually works best then click OK. Once the images are auto-aligned, we're going to start blending these together. The reason why we auto-align them is you'll get this thing called focus shifting, which is if you're focusing on the foreground, it might pull your image out a little bit, or if you focus on the background, it'll pull your image in a little bit, so you don't have the exact same crop or perspective on both. And not all lenses do this, only some do. So with this auto-aligned there's two ways to go about this we can select these both come up to image sorry edit and do auto blend layers and we're gonna do stack images seamless tones and colors and content aware fill transparent areas in case there's any warping going on so I usually start with this and what this is gonna do is gonna try to take the most in focus aspect of each of the two layers and blend them into a finished layer However, Photoshop doesn't always do a perfect job at this, but luckily, in the process, it makes masks for each layer in addition to a merge visible layer. So what we can do is trash the merge visible layer and then come into the masks and edit them manually until we get exactly what we're looking for. With that finished, let's check and see how Photoshop did. Here's the merge visible layer. We can look at the masks as well by holding Option or Alt on a PC and clicking the mask. And you can see how kind of crazy chaotic um, everything is that it's selected. So this first layer here is the background um, focus. So if we look at this and look at the mask, it selected the sky, just odd parts of the sky for some, some of the... Uh, the foreground focus and it doesn't honestly make much sense you can see here there's a lot of blending issues so it did not do a good job so what I'm gonna do in the in this case it didn't work sometimes it does so what I'm going to do is undo this the uh, auto blend layers get back to my two layers here after went one step too far after they've been auto aligned then I'm going to find out which one is my foreground focus so this one's foreground focus the top layer I'm going to mask that out with a black mask and then come in here with a paintbrush on white and then just work in slowly this layer to bring in focus back into the foreground and you'll notice the layers aren't actually aligned exactly um, the same there's a little bit of a little bit of movement while I'm painting over this um, that's that's okay it, it hardly ever aligns layers exactly perfect so what we can do 
is get a hard edge brush and um, kind of define our own seam line and work it into a very texture heavy area to kind of hide the blend that we're doing. You don't want to do it, you don't want to hide the blend over something like water or something that's smooth or a sky because you'll see a pretty obvious blend line. But if you find something that's texturally busy, so like the snow or the rocks down here, you can usually hide that blend pretty well. Quick trick, if you want to see what you've painted over already, you can hit backslash on your keyboard. Everything that's red is still masked out, and so I want to just get rid of the red. And I'm going to keep moving this on with the logs down here. And I'm pretty much going to paint all the way through this foreground with this um, with this foreground layer. So I'm blending it in to the foreground. And so I'm going to kind of choose my blend line to be around the water, water's edge here. So to remove that, you hit backslash again. So I'm just double checking to see if everything's in focus. So we can kind of see a before and after um, blending this layer in. So here's a before where things are a little bit out of focus and then after where we kind of dial that in by using that, that um, in focus foreground exposure. So to see where our blend line is, you can kind of see things shifting around here a bit, like right here. And it's honestly not too noticeable. So everything's looking pretty good. You can see a blend line right here. I'm just coming in here with a brush and making it smaller and just kind of working that out little by little, making sure everything else is good to go. Sometimes if you have like a stick, it'll be broken in two. Um, and you can see that there's, obvious, there's an obvious discontinuity or incontinuity. You can see that there's an obvious incontinuity um, over the blend line. So there's a little bit of out of focus here. So that happened from the edge of my brush. The hardness is a little bit too low. So what I want to do is pull this up to about a 50 and then come through here and make sure my edges are nice nice and sharp so that we don't have that um, softness that you get from the edge of the brush. So I'm just coming in here and removing the rest of the red. Down here, oh that's what I did to, well that's fine. I'm gonna remove that. And then we might get some issues right here if we turn off the, uh, yeah you can see, you see that blurry, there's that blurry line that's due to the soft edge of the brush. So we want to come in here and just kind of vertically paint over this blend line to kind of hide it. And this tree's got a lot of detail in it, so it's it's a good place to kind of hide your blend line because it's got textural busyness. So that's looking pretty good. And then along the water's edge as well was another place where we were experiencing a blend line. So I'm going to mask out the foreground. You just kind of come in here with a small brush, not that small, and then just work my way through here. And any part that I see that looks a little bit smudged is where that soft edge of the brush is affecting, so I want to remove that. And this takes a little bit of work. Um, if Photoshop doesn't get it right, which it hardly ever does. That flower shot that I posted from Crested Butte, that was, I forget, that was a, that was a nightmare to, to do the song because each individual flower um, I had to go through and make sure the, um, it was blended well with the rest of the image, with the background. So I'm thinking that looks pretty good. You'll see a slight shift in the foreground, but not horrible. All right. A lot of that is just natural waves in the log itself, so not too worried about it. Alright guys, I hope that helps. Um, get to get to focus stacking. It's a pretty cool technique if you're shooting a really um, large depth of field. Alright, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>